The time has come. Finally, we can talk about the Newton's law of gravitation. Why am I so excited? Because this is probably the first force that people realize from the nature in the history of science. And I'm pretty sure that you heard of that is because Newton's got hit by the apple from the apple tree. In fact, there are some people saying that Newton actually never get hit by the apple. He just saw it. Anyway, I don't think that is a meaningful discussion nowadays. Uh, doesn't really matter he got hit or not. More importantly, it's about his work and his equation. So let's take a look here. Okay, so the equation that we want to focus in this chapter is here. F equals to G M1 M2 over R squared. F is the gravitational force acting between two objects. M1 M2 are the masses of the two objects. And apparently gravitational force is talking about a force between two objects only. Okay, of course you can add up. I mean, if you have multiple objects, then of course you can add them up um, according to vector. And for R, it is the distance between the center of mass uh, between the two objects and G is being the gravitational constant, which is universal, like pi is 3.14. And uh, usually I call this big G and not to confuse with 9.81, that small g that we usually talk about. And this equation was published in his work, and that is called the book of this name in Latin. I don't know how to say it, but in English, it means mathematical principles of natural philosophy. And yes, philosophy. In the past, um, science was actually treated as philosophy because only people that are bored will think about philosophy as well as science so they're kind of the same thing in the past since you have been quite a while in IB physics so I hope the first thing now when you see a new equation in physics is thinking of how could we derive it or at least you should be wondering how could Newton Isaac Newton derive it about in, in, in 1686 is about more than 300 years ago so let me show you. In this equation, it can be broken into three parts mainly. One is of course the big G, the second part is M1 and M2, and the other part is over R squared. So let me talk about M1, M2 first. Guess how we could get M1 times M2. That's something to do with the Newton's third law. Okay, because this is talking about the gravitational force between the two objects and as we know from Newton's third law, whenever we exert a force, then the force will be in equal magnitude but opposite direction. So that's why for both, I mean, first of all, of course, I mean, without knowing this equation in IGCSE, you also know uh, for gravity, I mean weight, uh, the more mass you have, of course you have more weight, more gravitational force. And so that's why uh, the mass will matter in gravity. So the bigger the mass, um, then the greater the force. So that's why we have to multiply the two mass together. So this one will be the easiest part in this three. Okay, so for Isaac Newton, uh, realizing M1 times M2 is actually the easiest out of these three because this is his own work. Come on, this Newton's third law. So he knows this very well. The second thing that I would like to talk about will be the R square. More precisely, one over R square. So, so how how could he know? Like, how could he know? Like the distance. Of course, I mean intuitively, you know, if you are further away from the object, then probably the force will be weaker, just like a magnet, right? I mean, if you put two magnets close together, it will be stronger force. Or if you think about uh, electrostatic force, closer, of course, is stronger. If you put them apart, then the force will be weaker. But then, okay, then then why could why couldn't we have one over r? Why couldn't we have one over r cube or to the power of n or negative n in this case? Then why would this be two like so precisely? In order to know this, we have to go and visit the history of science again. And let's not forget Isaac Newton published this in sixteen eighty six. However. Before that, there was a scientist, an astronomer, who called Kappa. Not this guy that people usually refer to today, but this guy, okay? Kappa, uh, who is an astronomer, and there was an equation that he find out 
uh, which describe the period and also the radius of the orbit, which we'll talk about it in the future. And so from that, we can derive um, the relationship that is over R square instead of any other number. And so now, lastly, how will he know this is the G? And how will he know G is a constant that is 6.667 times 10 to the power of negative 11? He didn't know. Isaac Newton didn't know the value of this constant at that time when he published this book. And that is actually very normal. Because when he tried to derive this equation, he thought of the moon got attracted by the earth and thinking about the orbit of the moon itself using the work from Kappa. And so he find out there must be a relationship of m1 times m2 over r square times a constant because it doesn't directly equivalent to the force itself. So there must be a missing coefficient, but it doesn't really matter because what he find out more precisely is actually f proportional to m1 times m2 over r square. It doesn't really matter what that constant is. Just like when some people find out in the past the idea of pi, 3.14, but before that people only know that okay the um, circumference is of course proportional to the radius and if you try to think about and do experiment to find out the ratio you always find the same constant all the time so you may be wondering when is the first time in the history that people actually measure the big G and that is 6.667 times 10 to negative 11 then oh by the way for the time again uh, the Newton published this in 1686 and back to Kappa it, he was obviously earlier because he died in 1630 okay so Kappa was before Newton and come after Newton there was a another scientist called Henry Cavendish and you can see of course uh, he was born after Isaac Newton so he actually find out the first in history the gravitational constant Maybe I shouldn't use the word fine, but estimate, all right? The one who can estimate quite effectively and accurately in the history uh, for the first person. But then I believe when he find it out, Isaac Newton already died. Uh, yes, yes, he already died, unfortunately. So uh, Henry Cavendish was born in 1731 and Isaac Newton died at 1726. So it was like five years later than the Cavendish got to be born so for sure that when Cavendish first find it out uh, unfortunately Isaac Newton is no longer in the world so you know that's that's a bit sad I mean if if Isaac Newton could witness you know someone find out the universal constant I, I'm pretty sure that he would be very very happy and so for the story about Henry Cavendish and his experiment finding out the gravitational constant it is very very interesting uh, I already find two videos which I would play uh, put in the playlist uh, we have you know this professor from 60 symbol which is an excellent channel for physics and science and he will explain to you um, you know how Cavendish work it out and also like why it is so important for Cavendish to find it out and also there will be another video I'll put also in the playlist uh, showing you the animation as well so the basic idea is um, Cavendish did in a very enclosed system because anything that you know affect like the the vibration of the house or the wind itself would affect the measurement a lot because if you think about the gravitational force later on maybe later on we will calculate the force is very very small right when you talk about two object so uh, if you really want to find out um, the value of the force is very very hard so Cavendish was smart enough to design an experiment so that the results can be much much magnified and if you think about what you learned in chapter one about measurement uncertainty so if you think about uh, measuring anything then you also have absolute uncertainty right however if you cannot improve your instrument 
what you can do is you can enlarge, you can magnify your reading. And so in this case, your percentage error will be much, much smaller. And this is a very important spirit I want you to learn from Cavendish. Don't be limited by the resources, the equipment that you have. Use your creativity, your imagination, you'll be able to approach and measure what you want. The best experiment always come with creativity, but not abusing the power of instrument okay so really make sure you go and check out his story and experiment after this video i'll put the two videos on the playlist before we go and try to do some calculation i would like to go through the details of the definition especially about the wordings because this is going to be asked in IB quite a lot and we should be very careful with the wording itself like a lawyer so if you go and check out the textbook it said oh this one is when m1 m2 is the mass blah 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 this is not good enough so sorry if you just follow this you probably won't get full mark in exam however I would recommend you to see Wikipedia and I find this one is actually very good enough so what you can say and copy down on your notes is uh, this law will say for every point mass okay point mass is very important because uh, when you treat the distance we're talking about the center of mass of one to another from the center of mass so we treat them as a point attract okay it's an attraction force so attract this word is also very important every other point mass by a force Adding along the line in the setting the two point. I mean this part this part is still fine. This is optional maybe. The force, okay, here is the most important part. Proportional to the product of two masses. So that means M1 times M2. So this is the wording of M1 times M2. Very essential. The other part is inversely proportional. That means one over something to the square of the distance between them okay make sure you write that square off because it's out square okay so these two sentences will be sufficient for you to uh, define this law okay okay i know you can't wait so let's go and try to do some calculation so here is a word example from the textbook and i think it's too easy so i didn't include it in the booklet let's take a look simply so you can estimate the force between the sun and the earth of course as long as you know the parameters in the equation so uh, what you have to do is simply apply the equation so that's why i didn't increase because it's just substituting and calculate with your calculator so f equals to g m1 m2 over r squared so just substitute g which is a universal constant m1 and m2 to be the mass of the earth mass of the sun separately and by the way it would be a very interesting question to think about how could we actually measure the mass of different planets including the earth because there's no way you can put the electronic balance on top of them okay maybe we can we can do another video on that and also the distance between sun and the earth substitute everything into it make sure it is in si unit and you'll be able to find the force which is 3.5 times 10 to the power of 22 newton nothing really exciting right i mean we didn't know this is a force and now we know right Not, nothing really special uh however something special that i would like you to calculate right now is i want you to calculate the force of yourself or of a person let's say uh 70 kg okay and according to what we learned earlier in igcsc uh then you just use w equals to mg right and then you will be able to find 70 times 9.81 or 10 so you obtain something close to 700 newton instead of using w equals to mg i want you to use this equation to try it out okay so pause the video now and try it a few moments later okay so let me show you how i find it out so again you just have to cite the equation and then you just substitute all the value from g you can find from the test book or the data booklet uh, the mass i will take it as 70 and the mass will be the mass of the earth for the other one so i took 5.97 times 10 to the power of 24. for out the distance from the person to the earth i will simply take the earth radius so 
6371 km. And let's not forget to change it to SI unit. So you have to times 10 to the power of 3. And let's not forget to do the square as well when you press the calculator. So this is the final answer that you get. Some of you may ask, hey, um, we are not lying on the ground, right? So should we also add the center of mass of the person, which is about maybe, I think one meter is already already too much because you wouldn't be two meters tall probably, right? Um, you could, but then if you think about the calculation, if you add that one to this, it won't affect much. It's going to be 0, 0.0, wait, 1, yeah, 1, meter so yeah at one i mean to this number is, is like nothing right so you can just ignore that all right and this is uh something that we usually do in physics i mean for something that is insignificant then we can just uh ignore it because ultimately this is just an estimation and now i will want you to do one more question i want you to calculate how attractive i am okay of course i'm very attractive so imagine i'm here okay i'm more handsome than this of course there is another person a lady for example okay which is one meter away from me because of social distancing and there was another guy also one meter from me so which one will be more attracted and the answer is of course i'm so attractive so both of them will equally be attracted towards me okay i'm just joking Okay, I'm, it's just a joke. Uh, of course, scientifically, uh, it would depends on their own mass, right? I just said that distance is the same, but then it depends, like, who is simply heavier. So, in fact, if, for example, the lady is relatively heavier, a bit more fatty, then maybe, let's say, she's, say, 80 kg, okay, say I'm 70 kg, and this main is just 60 kg so technically um me and also that lady will be more attracted towards each other while me and that you know another man would not be as attracted because the mass right is less anyway so let's try to find out the force between me and how about to this man okay so Pause the video now, try to apply the equation and find out the value of the force. A few moments later. Okay, so the answer is actually 2.80 times 10 to the power of negative 7 Newton. So this is just so insignificant. Sorry, I'm not as that attractive as you think. Okay, either you are however okay so if you really want to be more attractive there are two ways one is getting closer to someone but that would look pretty strange and also you may get virus i mean nowadays the second way of doing it is you simply gain more fat i mean not really fat but get yourself to be heavier so gaining more weight basically all right, so in this video, you learn about the origin of Newton's law of gravitation and how people follow it up to find out the universal constant. Uh, again, make sure you check out the other two videos I put in the playlist about the story of Henry Cavendish and his experiment. We also try to use uh, you know, this equation to calculate some simple answers. And in the coming videos, we will also do more challenging questions and there's another concept called gravitational field strength uh, waiting for us and last but not least i also taught you how to be more attractive okay so that's the end of attractiveness class today i hope you enjoy learning physics with me if you do so please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel i'll see you again in the next video bye